Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming to today's fireside chat with Craig Newmark. This event is part of a Talks at Google program, and today's fireside chat is hosted by an, a Google internal community called Wikipedians at Google. Thank you for all for being here. My name is Zainan Zhou. Today's story is open at go crack dash Dory, and I already add some of the questions from the RSVP. Please feel free to use that link to add your questions and vote. Uh, we're super happy here uh, to have a well-renowned entrepreneur and philanthropist, Mr. Craig Mark, Newmark, founder of Craigslist and Craig, Craig Newmark Foundation. Craig is born in 1952 in New Jersey and moved to San Francisco around 1990. Around 1995, he started a mailing list which ultimately turned into Craigslist.org, one of the world's most successful online classified advertisement websites. Nowadays, he focuses more on philanthropic efforts with a Craig Newmark Foundation and hasn't been involved in the uh, management since 2000, while he called himself still doing some lightweight customer service. Please welcome Craig. <coughs> Folks, thanks, and I really do wear Kangol hats like this, but it's too warm in here now. Yeah, what I'd like to do is speak a bit about uh, founding Craigslist, why I did it. I'll talk a little bit more about the technology than I normally do, uh, given the audience. I'm gonna talk about the uh, philanthropic philosophy I developed without consciously thinking about it along those lines. And I'm gonna talk about the philanthropy I'm engaged with right now, including connections to Wikipedia, and also to uh, something called Google News, um, because I'm actually highly involved with that. In fact, I'll just begin by saying, so I don't forget that uh, Google News folks are doing really good, really important work, particularly involving the countering of disinformation. That includes uh, trying to get the names right, uh, Richard Gingras, Steve Grove, uh, Erica Anderson, and Olivia Ma. I'm probably missing some names, but those are the ones that uh, come to mind immediately. So I may repeat a little bit more about that. But uh, something I mentioned ahead, too, is I spent 17 years at IBM, and I saw frequently, especially in the field, people were not given credit for stuff they did so I uh, overdo it. I spent a couple years at Charles Schwab, for that matter, going around the company at lunch things, telling people that the internet would be a thing someday. This was 94, mostly. And the guy who started the uh, web at uh, Charles Schwab, a guy named Darius Maluski, has been uh, forgotten, except that I keep bringing his name up at things like this. Um, keep track of time for me, because I don't want to go crazy with it. Uh, my deal is that I am a nerd of the old school. Uh, born in the, you know, the uh, early 50s, grew up through the 50s and 60s. There's a stereotype about a guy who wears a plastic pocket protector, thick black glasses taped together, and no social skills. That was me in completely literally. In high school, two times, I really had my thick black glasses broken and I tried taping them together until I got replacements. No social skills. And even now, what you see before you is a simulation of social skills. <laughs> and I can do that for about 90 minutes, <laughs> after which things start going uh, south and I become, uh, I become uh, cranky. Um, my deal you know, is that I got a couple degrees in computer sciences at uh, Case Western Case Tech in the mid-70s, although I learned coding in high school in 1969 using punch cards, Fortran 2, and an IBM 1620. I feel like I should make it your homework assignment to look up uh, all three, but you'll be frightened. However, I can assure you that the 1620 was from that generation of computers which had the blinkety lights. And it literally did have the blinkety lights. And I kind of uh, missed that. Not that I'm going to be uh, searching a surplus for, uh, for one of those. It was about the size of a player piano. Anyway, 
you know, after some point, I decide to leave IBM. I get myself hired by Charles Schwab, who brings me to San Francisco, which I appreciate. And I got a lot of help from people around town on the net, using it news groups, the well, helping me with uh, neighborhoods around town, helping me with, uh, you know, restaurants and how to get around. And this was pretty good. You know, so early 95 rolls around, and I'm leaving Charles Schwab at the time, but I'm thinking I should give back. So I started a simple mailing list, and basically what it is, is I'm using a very advanced email tool back in 95 called Pine. And, you know, I figure it's just a CC list, 10, 12 people to start with, events that involve arts and or technology. And then I... Uh, you know, just the people tell me about more stuff and I do more stuff. People start asking me to do different things and I go along with that. But about the middle of uh, 95, the CC list stuff at about 250 addresses breaks and I need to use a list server. Somebody volunteers major domo and as an old school nerd, I'm very literal. So I'll call it San Francisco events. <laughs> People around me that are smarter than me. They say, we already call it Craigslist. Keep calling it that. It signifies it will be personal and quirky. And uh, then they explain to me what a brand is. <laughs> uh, seriously, I didn't know. Those of you uh, in marketing should have cause to mock me. But anyway, I learned uh, what it is. I was 42 at the time. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me. So it's Craigslist. Um, just kept plugging away for a few years all by myself. Uh, one interesting thing in 97 was that people at job posters asked me to charge them for their ads. Why? Um, they thought they were getting better results in the list, um, better results than paying expensive headhunters or whatever for, to help them get people. So I figured a, a philosophy might be to charge people for ads, people who already paid for ads, but to charge them uh, much less money for more effective ads. And that's a practice we continue to this day. The site is almost all free, but we do charge for ads, specifically at times to minimize abuse, like in New York apartment brokers. In Manhattan, the New York apartment brokers can really uh, damage people. Like, at the very last minute, they'll tell you there's a big commission on an apartment and that that's not okay. And speaking to them, we made a little dent in the problem, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. And in 97 also, uh, at that point we were hitting, or I was hitting, about a million page views per month, which at the end of 97, for a one-person operation, pretty good. <laughs> and uh, also Microsoft Sidewalk, an obsolete city site, wanted to run banner ads, but I dislike banner ads. I, many of them I think are just kind of stupid. So I just decided that, uh, you know, I'm living comfortably enough, I don't need the extra income. That grew into uh, the lesson that, uh, what I was calling nerd values, if you make enough money to live comfortably, and then to help your family, maybe some friends live comfortably, then it's more satisfying to change the world. And that's our philosophy uh, to date. But there, I, uh, people are also suggesting that I run the site on a volunteer basis. That's what happened in 98. Uh, to, and even back then, things were easy. I recently saw a credit card bill from back then, and I was running Craigslist on something called Best Internet Services, which is all gone now. But I was running the that site. That was the name, right? Well, sorry? Best Internet Service. Oh, that Best was the was brand the name. of that. Yeah, they got bought by someone who was bought by someone else. And, uh, but I was paying 35 bucks a month <laughs> for hosting services back then. And because sometime in that time frame, well, before I, uh, well, get, before I used uh, the services of volunteers, I was thinking, well, I'm using Pine. I, at one point, realized, oh, Pine can output an email into a uh, Perl script. Perl was hot then. <laughs> and uh, I figured, well, 
I can write some simple code which extracts the email headers, because they're pretty predictable, and I would have instant HTML pages, therefore instant publishing, and that's how our site was born. I think that was late 96, but I don't remember, because this was all a hobby, and I wasn't taking notes. <laughs> so when 98 rolls around, I try writing things from, uh, with volunteers, and uh, to say a lot in a few words, people, some of the job posters who wanted to pay me, who started off that like a year before, they approached me and said things were not working. And they said if I wanted Craigslist to survive, I had to go full time, make it into a real company, and uh, they were right. Um, 99, I had to make uh, tough decisions like how much to monetize. And again, I was thinking, you know, that nerd values thing. And I was thinking even from Sunday school, Mr. and Mrs. Levin uh, taught me, you know, to think how much is enough. And in my case, not too much is enough. I do indulge myself in some ways. I buy all the books I want and things like that. But, uh, you know, I don't go crazy with things. And I just gave up my old Prius, 15 years old, to a brother-in-law who has three uh, kids who are driving now. You know, I have a feeling I may wind up regretting my decision, and I have my eye on the Chevy Bolt, which is a good electric car, and it has a lot of electronics on it, which I could fool around with and possibly injure myself. So there I am, you know, uh, these guys say I should uh, start a new, you know, start my own company. And by then, even at lots of parties and stuff, I talked to uh, bankers and uh, you know, VCs in this area. And they're telling me, hey, I should uh, monetize the usual Silicon Valley way, and they will be putting billions of dollars on the table. Mm -hmm. The answer again is, how much do you need? Like, now that I've done a lot of philanthropy, I can see having uh, some billions to give away would be pretty cool. But I also think about the philanthropic model of the Robert Barons, who would acquire the equivalent of billions. They would acquire it by abusing their employees and their customers, and then they would give back a little bit of it, you know, decades after the fact. So instead, I'm thinking what Craigslist is about is helping people put food on the table. It's helping people find a table under which to put, on, on which to put the food. And then Craigslist is about finding a roof under which to put the table <laughs> with the food. And so there's this uh, philanthropic model I've accidentally come up with, which is let someone trying to put food on the table keep the money they would otherwise spend in advertising. And that's a much more cost-efficient uh, model for philanthropy. And so, said in fewest words, the business model is doing well by doing good. And that worked out uh, pretty well. Uh, I tried running the company myself for about a year, and then some of the same people uh, approached me and helped me understand that as a manager, I suck. <laughs> um, I'm emotionally unsuited uh, to the hardest of uh, management activities, like hiring and firing people. I'm just not tough. Hired a Jim, Back, Jim Buckmaster to do the job. Uh, that's worked. And uh, I figured around then I stopped programming because, you know, at some point around then we had hired a whole cadre of programmers, all of whom smarter than me. But I saw a need for myself to go full-time in customer service because another Sunday school lesson was Treat people like you want to be treated. And in business, that means have serious customer service. And you do the best you can. It's challenging when your site is mostly free. And that's probably an unsolvable problem in some regards. But that's what we, uh, that's what we were uh, trying. And uh, turned it over to Jim, did customer service uh, for a long time. Thing is, in customer service online, you may have heard that uh, you see some things that you can never unsee. You know, I have seen a certain amount of ugliness. 
I've seen far more good, but the ugliness can get to you. And that's a big problem right now in user-generated content and in commenting systems. There is a great need for keyword, keyword filtering kind of systems, that is actually just word filtering systems that can figure out bad stuff um, in ways that doesn't rely on actually seeing specific keywords or doing Bayesian filtering. What's needed is software, which I don't think exists, because I don't think AI heuristics will solve that problem. Um, if anyone knows of anything like that, I'd like to know. But uh, um, I have a feeling the only thing I could do the full customer service job would be actual strong AI. And I, for one, welcome our machine overlords. Frankly, I'm beginning to feel like it's time for machine overlords. And when I say that, I'm uh, not sure if I'm joking anymore. <laughs> so that was, uh, you know, 2000. And since then, Craigslist uh, just grows. We're now in a whole bunch more cities, a whole bunch more countries. Uh, the direction I uh, put it in generally remains unchanged. Uh, folks may here may have noticed that we have changed the user experience, but stay consistent with design principles, which say keep it simple and keep it fast. Listen to what are the real needs and wants of people, not the fancy stuff. So you'll see that in our tables of contents, which are used to be things you scanned, there is fairly sophisticated database powering there. And uh, there's, uh, you know, you'll be able to see thumbnails of the pictures which are in the things. You'll be able to see the whole pictures. Uh, you'll be able to see maps and all the variants of that. You see, the last programming thing that I did, 99 or 2000, I don't remember when, was, well, back then, remember, I was using Pine. The data set, the database for Craigslist back then was Pine email folders. So, and Pine is great. Pine, forgive me, in many respects is much easier to use than Gmail. <laughs> this is actually, uh, forgive me for bringing up the name, I had an extensive discussion on this with Marissa Meyer about 10 years ago, <laughs> which is why there are some shortcuts in Gmail. But the deal is that uh, I was able to, with a few uh, commands, to identify and remove all the old ads in a category with Pine. And when Pine email folders started proving to be uh, unsatisfactory, I switched to MySQL, and that's when I stopped coding. Now, and for the last several years, I do some uh, what I call lightweight or token customer service to stay in touch with what's real because you want to find out what's going on with everything. What do people care about? What matters to people? And so I get to do that. Sometimes I handle customer service email directly. And also very frequently, people will find me in social media and uh, come up with requests, which I'm embarrassed to say I can't really help with. Um, so what I do with those is I generally uh, just uh, share them with uh, mainline customer service. And I have to phrase it carefully because the Yahoo versus Barnes case makes it very clear that you can't imply you're going to solve a problem. And you know, not you know, and if you if it slips between the cracks or you just forget or whatever, you have a problem. So that's Craigslist there, doing well by doing good. And again, I made that decision to monetize minimally in uh, 99, 2000. Not altruistically, but it's just what feels right, speaking as a nerd, as a person who is genuinely dysfunctional in these regards. Uh, that's uh, what happens sometimes. But in the last uh, 10 plus years, over those uh, years, people from nonprofit organizations were coming to me talking about how to, uh, how to build community, how to run sites, which might be the Craigslist for something. And frankly, too, they, at times they were hoping for uh, cash contributions and so on. And I started getting organized regarding that in 2011 with something called Craig Connects. And as branding, that kind of uh, sucks and it just didn't work very well. I'm pretty, uh, I'm more organized now and I have this thing, 
craignewmarkphilanthropies.org, which consists of Craig Newmark Foundation, which is a 501c3, and I have a couple of donor-advised funds. There's also the Craigslist Charitable Fund. The idea is that I figure um, I can see what's going on in the world today, and I can identify some areas where uh, help is needed. And, uh, you know, where I can help other people. I can find smart people who are doing things that make a difference and support them with media, with cash, with convening power. Uh, the deal is that I screwed up really badly with Craigslist in the sense that I haven't, I never told people back in 2000 and not now that I'm not in Craigslist management and I've had real, no real role to play in any decision making since 2000. Stupid of me. And I learned how stupid that was around 2010. So since then, I've now gotten communications and PR religion. I'm a zealot. That matters for technical people because every one of us has our own image, our own brand, our own narrative. And no one is going to really uh, watch out for your own narrative. That's something as tech people we're all responsible for. But I figured that out in 2010, got professional help, and right now I need a great deal of professional help, and I have it. I got an email from some of the folks right before coming up here, uh, literally. So that's a big, big lesson. But anyway, with uh, the help of professional communicators, I've identified four areas where I'm helping people. There's uh, veterans and their families. Because I figure, if someone's willing to uh, maybe go to another country and risk taking a bullet protecting me, I should do something. And it never occurred to me until I was told that their families give up and sacrifice a lot for them. So, for example, I started off today working with the Bob Woodruff Foundation. They find, they qualify and vet and fund organizations which support wounded, vet wounded veterans and their families and their caregivers. So this is a really good setup we got going, and literally that was 9 o'clock this morning that I met with him. Um, another area, in the interest of practicing what you preach and treating people like you want to be treated, I have a women in tech effort, which I'm still developing. Uh, I've been involved for years with the Women's Startup Challenge, which is a deal where um, startups run by women pitch to a panel of uh, VCs winning valuable cash prizes and winning valuable time with VCs because they'll usually hang around and help you network and give you advice. So that's a big deal. Um, in this year too, well if you want to protect the country, um, voting rights, the voting rights of lots of people in this country are under attack. We knew they were under attack by bad politicians for some years because sometimes the, the politicians will admit it, sometimes under oath. A week or so ago, in a document produced by Robert Mueller in part 47, he says that one thing the Russians were doing was interfering with uh, people actually voting. They were going after people who might vote Democratic and that may have tilted things in some uh, states. Notice I'm not making a political statement there. I'm talking about protecting the country. So the deal is that I'm doing what I can to protect voting rights. That's still developing because I'm only now talking to the people doing it. Most of all, though, I have a program in involved with trustworthy journalism. And I'm supporting a number of groups that are trying to do good work, like I'm working with the Google News people to support the Trust Project out of Santa Clara University. Speaking as a news consumer, I just want news I can trust. The Trust Project is one way of articulating what a news outlet has to do to provide trustworthy news. Things like, don't lie to people. Things like, when you do make a mistake, fix it. Things like, listen to different kinds of people so you get different perspectives. There's other things involved too. Pointer Institute runs the International Fact Checking Network. Because if a news outlet commits to trustworthy journalism, they should, you know, you need watchdogs to make sure that they're doing it. But 
as of a year ago, one guy who actually has been here and who talks with the Google News people a lot, and also Facebook, a guy named Jeff Jarvis a year ago, told me for fun to read the NATO Handbook on Russian Information Warfare. In that, Russian military, and military intelligence in particular, tell us, tell the world, what they're going to do to the U.S. during the election. Uh, and uh, last week, I think, Canadian intelligence, among others, says, hey, here's what the Russians did in 2016 and continue to do. Now again, growing up in the 50s, I saw a lot of crackpot activity regarding communists and Russians. And so I'm uh, very gun-shy in this regards. But um, the intelligence community and uh, you know, the people investigating fake news, the people who are looking at networks of it say, a lot of, there's a lot of domestic bad actors amplifying what the Russians are doing for really bad results, including a lot of harassment. This is real stuff. And I figure if I want to help uh, defend the country, I need to find people, do, find people doing good work. I need to get them communication support. And I need to fund them. And honestly, I'm now writing large checks to support these groups because uh, they are defending the country just like active service members and veterans and their families help defend the country. Similarly, I think Wikipedia plays a big role in this because my slogan about Wikipedia is that Wikipedia is where facts go to live. So I'm involved in uh, you know, helping fund their counter-harassment effort. I'm talking to them about uh, what's the nature of reliable sources. And uh, I'm also working with them on the bios of living persons because it's just really hard to get those bios fixed. I had a college professor uh, fix mine up for the most part, but I've been into some events recently where when I talk about Wikipedia, frankly, I get a lot of crap from notable people who have bios who have no way of fixing them. So the, those are the kinds of things I'm uh, working with Wikipedia. I am a part, uh, one of the funders of Wiki Tribune, uh, but that's not a Wikipedia thing, although oddly last week in uh, Miami at a conference, I saw Jimmy plus uh, Orit, who are the co-founders of Wiki Tribune. So the deal here is on the Craigslist side, a business model of doing well by doing good with a lot of luck can do pretty well. And I feel I, uh, well, if, you may, if you're lucky enough to do well, you should help the next people do well. And you should practice what you preach, which includes um, treating people like you want to be treated. I can go on quite a long time, but I'm going to stop there. Thank you very much. Um, I think you mentioned that uh, in 2011 that uh, you started the Crack Connect, and in 2015 you, you, you decided to uh, launch the Crack Newmark Foundation. But even based on the name, I think there are quite different approaches behind that message, right? So uh, what? <laughs> uh, you're making a correct inference regarding the names. It just uh, didn't work out that way. Um, I remember 2011, I wanted to have a brand that would be catchy and effective. The best we could think of, uh, Craig and X just failed because no one knows what Craig is. Craig Newmark Foundation or Craig Newmark Philanthropies, people know what that is. And interestingly, I hear rumors that people in New York may know more about who Craig Newmark is than in the Bay Area. The advantage there is that New York is the country's hub of news media and influence and connection. This isn't it. And what I want to do are things that contribute, as I push my efforts, I want to contribute towards a new normal of trustworthy news. And that means things that I do have to be noticed to be effective. I think we are uh, in about, uh, we have about 20 minutes left. And then we can um, have some questions that was from the, the Dory. And also, yeah. you're more than welcome to use that mic for, uh, for live questions as well. 
I can ask a question that was uh, from Googler's RSVP. One of the is, uh, I've been using CL at least for at least 10 years and cannot pass up the moment to thank you for making a huge impact to everyday Americans like myself. The question is, what inspired you to build the crack list in the first place? Uh, it literally is just the, uh, the sense that I should give back. Because on the well and Usenet news groups, even back in the early 90s, uh, with all the craziness, there were still a lot of people who would help each other out, sometimes contributing expensive uh, consulting time. There were a couple of dramatic cases on the well where a uh, doctor helped uh, save people. So that's it. The idea is that I'm getting such good stuff from this community, I should give back, and it felt right. But well, was it very difficult to get, the, because at the time there was not much of that services, right? Uh, even 250 of the subscribers at the time who were pretty much using maybe phone lines and modems yeah. to dial, right? <laughs> if you think about that, that's quite difficult. What, what's the, uh, ch the biggest challenge in the early, uh, earliest days? Yeah, I think I started, by the way, with a 9600, 96 kilobaud modem, or 9.6 kilobaud modem, and I remember when 56 was a big deal. Um, but uh, uh, can you repeat that again? Well, <laughs> I got what, lost what was your, the, the biggest challenge in the oh, earliest days? The biggest challenge in terms of growing, well, the good part was I wasn't thinking about growing. Things grew word of mouth. If someone at a company was getting the mailings, they would share it with other people in the same company, and then that person would send me an email saying, put me on the email list. That worked pretty well. Something that helped accelerate this was that this was uh, 95 when the dot-com boom was just hitting San Francisco. And uh, that accelerated things. A phenomenon back there, like lots of launch parties, some open, some closed. Uh, Patty Baran did something called SF Girl. Her specialty was finding launch parties and telling people how to get into them, even if they were closed. My only distinct memory from that time was that the uh, new, at that time, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, uh, in the entry, they had f lots of food, and there were big mounds of fresh shrimp. And that was my uh, favorite memory uh, of, that, uh, of that era. Because people were spending way too much money on this kind of thing. You know, if you watch HBO Silicon Valley, you'll see a lot of the, uh, that history being recapitulated. We'll take one uh, live question. Thank you for joining us today. Um, there's so many refugees globally. Um, do you have things, um, like, Frank, this is great for if you move to the city and I need a free coach and for those people. But I'm wondering, is there other things like... Uh, that you're looking at or advice can happen? Um, I am frustrated in that I'm not smart enough to think of really good things to do. What I have done, and partly through a charity called Invenio in, this, in San Francisco, is to help get refugee centers and so on, and related efforts wired up for the internet, because the aid workers say that they need internet connectivity for various purposes. For example, in that we did that in Haiti. That is, I helped by funding in Haiti. Uh, and just yesterday, I was reminded that I helped get wired up the Dadaab um, refugee camp, which may be the largest in the world. And I think it's in northern Africa someplace. I had forgotten all about it until I saw a reference because of a keyword search in Google News yesterday. And again, literally yesterday. Um, there's been all other ones, too. When uh, the Obama administration was trying a serious outreach to the Islamic world, I helped wire up the vocational schools in the West Bank. Now, we have something going on an uh, island in Lake Victoria where they were helping provide internet connectivity. But there, it's because people need it. But it's also a lure into a facility to get people test tested for HIV. Because culturally speaking, it's really hard to get people to get tested, but they all want to be on the net. So those are small things. Nowadays, I'm thinking I'm specializing 
because in our country, maybe we have an all hands on deck situation where things have gotten bad and we need to do something good like protecting the vote, like uh, stopping uh, bad actors, Russians or otherwise, from uh, contaminating the news because you really can't run a democracy if the normal national conversation has a lot of lying going on. Thank you. Thank you. And we have another question from Dory. Um, I think this is related, your yeah, in, to related to um, the involvement of, uh, of, the, the, uh, of the management, but uh, the question is, I can think of many ways that Craigslist can improve and wondering what's the roadmap and why does uh, Craigslist seems reluctant to take it to the next level? Um, well, for any of that, since I'm not involved in management, email something to jim at craigslist.org. Don't send any intellectual property, and uh, hopefully you've gotten a lecture about protecting that, if not here from the folks on HBO Silicon Valley. Um, so please do that. Bear in mind that what people seem to need is not fancy stuff, but effective stuff. Fast and uh, simple is always big. Regarding the next level, I don't know what the next level is, but if you're helping people put food on the table, that's pretty good next level to me. I, I, I have the, actually think of a, a follow-up question on that. Like, um, <clears throat> in terms of funding in, from the, uh, from the Craigslist, uh, you have been very conservative in turning down uh, and turned down a lot of investment ask, right? Uh, and have you ever wondering that with more resource like money that Craigslist would be able to have more resources in fighting uh, like scams and, and, and spams? It's, it's, uh -huh. and, and this also really applies to not just Craigslist but also maybe Wikipedia and, and, and maybe the, the, uh, the overall news community Maybe well. uh, what we need is a uh, crash project, a Manhattan project, in terms of the software which can figure out bad intent on the part of a posting of any sort. Mm -hmm. A posting could be an ad or a comment. Um, that would be really, really smart software. I don't think it exists, and I don't think it's going to exist anytime soon. Maybe I should... Uh, offer a really big prize for that. And maybe that would be, uh, maybe that would be uh, useful, since I don't think it exists. Yeah, but we do, uh, we do need that, that kind of thing. Um, there are, again, those are those people who think software that smart uh, could achieve self-awareness. And, you know, you hope it's the nice kind of self-awareness like the like the AIs of Ian Banks' culture novels and not the murderous, pistol-wielding robots of Westworld. Although that is a really good show. Thank you. We have another live question. Hi, thank you for being here and sharing your story. I really appreciate it. Um, you seem like a really humble person, but I will ask this anyways. When you look back, what is the biggest mistake you think you did and what did you learn from it? Our big, uh, mis well, the big mistake as a company was not seizing control and determining our own narrative. When you're not telling your own story, other people can tell it, and most of them will be good. Some, will be, some of them will be running scams of one sort or another. That's why on, yeah, in 2010, I started doing it for myself, and I've stumbled along the way, but now I have a really good firm helping me out. The thing is that you do need good, smart people doing that. Uh, like uh, Mark Benioff at uh, Salesforce does a great job of it. There are other dot-coms who have done a terrible job of it, even when people like me are trying to help them and to try to do a little wake-up call. Free to ask another live question. Again, again, thank you for sharing Craigslist. I've used it throughout my life. Um, I was wondering if you had any advice in general around creating internet-wide communities. Like, how do you handle that scale of people, or what advice you give to companies or startups or nonprofits trying to create internet-scale? Uh, I don't have broad overall uh, oh, uh, advice. Just watch out that user-generated content will have a moderation problem, 
and there's a number of unsolved problems with it. Yeah, and right now that's in major flux right now. Somewhere in Alphabet, there's a jigsaw. I think that's Jared uh, Cohen. I keep forgetting his last name. Working directly with Eric Schmidt. They think they have a, a handle on the problem. I don't know, but uh, that's something which is badly needed. There are folks who are doing uh, big work with machine learning here, and that may, that may lead the path, but again, uh, um, no one knows how where machine le learning is going to lead us, and I am kind of excited about it, but remember, I've been reading science fiction for over 50 years. How about I put the question on the other way? Uh, <clears throat> So you have been a, a nerd, and the, the Craigslist is actually a very successful community, right? If we want to learn from how to create a wide co com internet community, what are things that are not coding or technical, but the things that you've done, what are the practices and strategy in the early days that you think is part of the success of this creating this uh, community? Um, the success factor is doing one's best to provide a, a customer service that's serious. Again, a challenge when your site is mostly free. Um, that was the big thing right there because the initial spirit that this site was about uh, giving people a break, uh, and people could see that uh, by accident, that proved to be a good start, a good initial culture, whereas people like to say it's in our DNA, and that's managed to succeed. Is there any challenge to work with volunteers? With, uh, with volunteers in the early ages. Oh, like that before one year, 1980, you, you mentioned a lot of yeah. them are volunteers. In that first year, the volunteer thing failed because you, ca uh, you can't tell a volunteer to like, you just can't tell them that their job depends on getting something done at a certain time because if they're volunteers, you can't withdraw their pay. So companies, I guess the company in human history is quite an invention to make things work that otherwise uh, wouldn't work. So uh, you normally don't think of it as an invention, but it is. It is, uh, and it is an invention of the way how people can collaborate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take another uh, live questions. Thanks for coming here. Um, again, I'm very uh, interested in, in your story, and that was uh, really good to hear from you. Um, my, I guess my question is, you know, you mentioned that people come to you to say, do you have advice for creating the Craigslist of the law? <laughs> um, I do find the fundamental principle of Craigslist as a, as a product very interesting, which is connecting people who need things with connecting people who want things in a single place of exchange, right? In, in a very fundamental level, like maybe Airbnb is even trying to do that, which is, you know, I have some leftover things and some people could pay me for some of these things. I'm, I'm curious to know from all the ones that you've heard, can I create a correct list of whatever? What are some of the most interesting um, things? What are some of the most successful things or even weirder, you know? Things? Uh, I don't pay much attention to the people who make businesses out of that because I, uh, I guess I just don't care. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a distraction. The best kind of things are where people manage to make a little business out of finding junk stuff and then rebuilding it and making it into something real. And until today, I couldn't think of a good example, except, again, I just gave a, I was on a panel at Sanford Business School where a kid who uh, must have been 20 but looked 14 to me, but he made a business out of going to the junkyards in his neighborhood, um, finding old bikes, uh, rebuilding them, and selling them. And that uh, was a way that he saved up enough uh, for whatever he needed, maybe a little bit for a college or something like that. Uh, that feels really good. And there's been other things, too, because during the uh, recession around 2008, 2009, I could see a lot of people who really relying on uh, our site for advertising. They were relying on it uh, for barter because sometimes that's the only way you're going to uh, get what you need in a recession. And uh, that uh, lasted a couple of years, I think. So we have all these uh, things happen that uh, does feel pretty good. But meanwhile, 
in these philanthropic areas I have, we have real challenges. Um, again, on CraigNewmarkPhilanthropies.org, that's how I'm. Uh, oh, that's how I'm getting this uh, uh, this stuff done the best I can. I should mention that I'm not restricting myself completely to those those four areas. I'm working with some groups on food security, like uh, Meals on Wheels kinds of things, delivering hot food to people or whatever. Like in New York in particular, I support God's Lovely Deliver, which when you say it fast is God's Lovely Liver. Um, and I also support uh, Pigeon Rescue, because I know how important that is to everyone. I've also learned there that pigeon pants is a thing and that you want the pigeon to be wearing the pants before they fly onto your shoulder to coo lovingly at you. If they coo first and then the pants are put on, you may have a problem, and I did. Although I do like pigeons a lot. We have some question from the Dory again. Uh, I think the live streaming uh, people are now sending the, the questions. One question is, uh, Craigslist has notoriously not modernized its design and UX. What's the reasoning for this? Well, I can't speak for the whole company, but if you look at the site, uh, we've been incrementally making improvements in it uh, for years. Both improvements that you can see, like the database, like the thumbnail sketches and all that. And the people who use the site say, this is what they want. So we've made a lot of improvements that way. There's a lot of improvements that you can't see, like improved caching and efforts to keep the site fast. Speed is a design principle, and it's a really important design principle. And yeah, Google does a lot of things along those lines. Like something I have to look into is a better use of uh, Google domain uh, service, because I have my real doubts uh, regarding both my ISPs, in fact, all three of my ISPs, because something tells me their DNS lookups are uh, kind of sluggish. I should also count the hotel I usually stay at in New York, because their ISP kind of uh, fails to deliver, but I'm hoping not to be in there much longer. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a question that is regarding uh, the integration of a blockchain. The question says, I personally really uh, appreciate Wikipedia and, Craig and Craigslist as the free layers of knowledge and marketing information in the economy. Have you considered blockchain integration in which you could create pure decentralized Craigslist and tokenomics around it? Well, what's your view in general on that and how can people can collaborate? Well, uh, blockchain is applied to Craigslist. I just don't know what Jim's working on. What I'm thinking is that blockchain-based identity, verified identity, might be a way that we can get a lot more accountability on the net. And like when you get a scam sent to you or a piece of spam, you'd like to hold the sender accountable to that. That's good. But on the net, we're always going to need places where you can be completely anonymous places for uh, dissidents, <coughs> whistleblowers, uh, people who may ha be in a really bad domestic abuse situation. We're always going to need places where verified identity is not good, where anonymity is good. Uh, this may also apply, and this is a big thing, the European Union now has this GDPR standard. Uh, it's a, a set of standards which allow consumers to control the data passed between publishers and advertisers. And uh, my, gu my gut feeling is that blockchain-based control of an individual's data will be a way to make everyone happy in terms of the data about a consumer that a advertiser and publisher can share. Because I don't know about you, but I want control of that kind of data. And I do want to be served ads which actually means something to me. You know, sometimes it's mixed because my wife and I are my wife and I share an Amazon account, especially when she's buying things for the nephews and nieces, and we've got 21 of them. So odd things show up in my uh, in my Amazon profile. That's okay, but I want the ability to control that. Blockchain may be the way to do that. And do you think it also may help in terms of, let's say, um, 
need to uh, the true news and uh, uh, fighting the fake news, for example. Okay. I don't know honestly what role it may play in that. That's something that people smarter than me are working on. Um, my gut tells me that uh, like one of the biggest things that need to happen are the fact checkers, uh, like at the International Fact Checking Network and the tech and check people at Duke. Like if you fa if fact checking in real time is really hard because if someone lies to the public um, and the newspapers and so on report it, you know, it, they may only f realize that it's a lie an hour after. So we're talking up summary fact checking, meaning that a person or a news outlet will have a track record in terms of how honest they are or not. And I think that's going to need a lot of, uh, that's going to need a lot of work. Because frankly, um, it's not hard to figure out what news outlets try to get things right and which news outlets deliberately get things wrong. The idea is how do you do it so that no one is an arbiter of truth. There's no one, no single group or anything will arbitrate truth. Instead you have a large network of networks and that's what's happening right now. Maybe not fast enough and I uh, just realized another condition I may put on if I may make, if I'm going to make a very large grant to a particular news uh, institution. Because, you know, I'm talking about journalism, but I'm a news consumer and I've learned a lot, but unless you've been writing to, get to deadline like five times a week, you don't know journalism. Because that's really a tough kind of creative pressure. You know, I've, I've been in situations where I've had to write code to deadline, but writing stories to deadline is tougher because you don't know what the story is ahead of time, whereas if you're coding, you normally know what kind of stuff you got to write. Presumably someone's done some decent requirements definition of the variety, which is not entirely stupid. I put that qualification on uh, just reminding people that I worked in IBM development for uh, six years. <laughs> Not that I have anything specific in mind. Okay, one last question. Uh, we saw the startup trend of pursuing vertical uh, opportunities of what Craigslist is doing for the past de decade. As a horizontal company, I'm wondering what Craigslist think of this trend and how Craigslist will respond to this trend of the future. Uh, I don't think about it much because I'm focused on philanthropy. Uh, Jim may be thinking about it but you'd have to ask him, <laughs> which is not a satisfactory answer. But again, the deal is that, and may, it's maybe a good thing that like for roughly 10 years, um, I focused, well, for, for 10 years, I focused on coding, then customer service. Then for a lot of that, I focused on customer service and then philanthropy. Not that I'm uh, really, really smart at any of that, but I'm combining the two. You know, I've been lucky enough to do well, and I'm putting my money where my mouth is in all this. The deal is that uh, you know, there's this billionaire's pledge to uh, give away half of what you've made during your lifetime. I've, uh, fr I'm not being specific, but I've already exceeded that. I'm uh, looking to do more, to do it in smart ways, because a, a democracy can't survive built on lies. And you know, we need to fix that, and we have some runway to fix that until things go really bad. So I'm involved in that kind of thing. And by involved, I mean I'm involved in it literally every day. And, uh, you know, that ain't so bad. Again, there's a lot of people around who are smarter than me and who do more than me. My role is to uh, bring them together and to get some uh, cash to them. Not bad. Thank you. I'd like to thank Craig and Mark for being here and have the conversation with us. And I would like to thank the crew and all the audience here and on the live streaming. Thank you for being here. And please follow a Go slash Wikipedians uh, for future events. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.